Chairs No Waiting, episode number 389, Mayberry Folks on Radio. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Check out Weavers. they got the 2017 Andy Griffith Show wall calendar. Definitely something all Mayberry fans need. Share the Mayberry love throughout the year. Get it now at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Also check out the Mayberry Trivia book by Scott Hopkins. Great book. And if you need a t-shirt, this is one of our newer ones. You'll have to go through us first. Great shirts over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Yay, Two Chairs No Wedding is also brought to you by donations from listeners like you. And we really do appreciate it. We do have some executive producers, but I didn't write down the names tonight. So uh, it's going to be Jan. Jan Newsom, who is my lovely wife and puts up with me doing this every week here for mm, 389 weeks plus. Because I've missed a couple of weeks, probably. So, hey, folks, I'm Alan Newsom, your host for uh, Two Chairs No Waiting. I hope you enjoy the Andy Griffith Show because that's what we're going to be talking about. You know, it's a surprise, I know, but we talk about the Andy Griffith Show and just about anything that happened in or around the Andy Griffith Show. That's what we talk about here on Two Chairs No Waiting. Just like over at Floyd's Barbershop. Yeah, two chairs. Yeah, and I got the magazines to swing it, too. Yeah, just like Floyd. Uh, we enjoy visiting and talking about the Andy Griffith Show. So I hope you are going to enjoy us too. Today, tonight, whenever you're listening to this, we're going to be talking about folks uh, that were on the Andy Griffith Show that were also on the radio. Uh, so we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But first, I want to uh, pick up this voicemail from last week. Uh, well, actually, before I hit the voicemail, let's do this one. Last week, we were talking about the mention of a snappy lunch. Uh, on the Andy Griffith Show, if you guys listened to last week's episode. And I didn't have the clip ready, but if you if you listened all the way to the end to the episode, after the episode music ended, which, you know, if you didn't get bored and quit listening to the music, you know, how could you not listen to the Mayberry Band? I, I don't know. But, but if you stopped, you didn't hear the clip because I added it to the end of the episode. So this is when the uh, mention on Andy the Matchmaker, this is when Andy actually mentions... The snappy lunch. So let me play that real quick for you. You want to? I'm, I'm going to take Miss Ellie to the picture show Saturday night. You gonna, you and Miss Rosemary to go with us. And then after the show, mm-hmm. why, we can go down to snappy lunch and get something to eat and some coffee. Want to? Yeah, so there it was. So there's the little mention of the Andy, of the uh, snappy lunch on the Andy Grevis show. So if you didn't hear that last week, there it is. If you listen to last week's episode or watch the video, whichever, at the end, after the episode music, you'll hear that same clip. So that was it. We had some controversy last week about whether or not it was mentioned anywhere else. Uh, We talked about that in the after show, which we always have on Monday nights. So if you'd like to join us on Monday nights, you can go to live.twochairsnowaiting.com and you'll be able to join us in the chat room on Monday nights at 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern time, where we uh, have about 8 or 15, 20 people in there, 18 to 20 people usually in the chat room, uh, visiting and having a good time talking about the Andy Grover show and maybe actually listening to the things I'm talking about, <laughs> but not always, but, uh, you know, Hey, they have a good time and that's all that really matters visiting with one another, but I uh, definitely want to invite you to do that. Uh, but there was controversy last week as to whether or not the, uh, snappy lunch was mentioned on any other episodes. Uh, we couldn't find one and they reported back this week, that nobody was able to find another mention. So if there is another mention, I don't know of it, but I would love to hear from you if you know of one, and we will go and find it and play that clip right here. All right, so next up, we're going to hear from uh, Robbie. Now, Robbie had uh, he had called in uh, a while back uh, asking about Andy's hair. Okay, so and I, I was trying to do a little bit of research on this, and, uh, well, I'll let you hear what he's going to say, but he talks about Andy's hair and about whether or not it was actually gray, uh, because, you know, just right after the Andy Griffith show was over, he, uh, he was on some other TV series and in those series, you could see that his hair was gray. Well, it was only a year or so after the Andy Griffith show. So we're going to talk about that just a little bit with him and, uh, hear from him first And then we will uh, look at some pictures, and I'll post them online. 
uh, from the Andy Griffith show uh, as well. So we, I think we'll, we should have a lot of fun with that. So, uh, Robbie, I believe you are ready. Uh, so take it away. Oh, wait, that's not Robbie. Oh my goodness. That was a gunshot. That's something. That's a little teaser. Hey, Alan. There's Robbie. This is Robbie coming up from Oklahoma. I haven't called your show in a long time. Anyways, I was wanting to bring up an interesting fact about the Andy Griffith show. I was wondering when his hair turned gray, Andy Griffiths, and then 1970 on the new Andy Griffith show, it showed him with some gray hair, and in 1972, he had gray hair in a clip on YouTube called Andy Griffith and Joyce Van Patten, Hawaii 5-0. That's from 1972. He had gray hair. So I wonder, Ellen, do you think he colored his hair during the Andy Griff show when Opie was in it, you know, and Aunt B and them? Because he had colored hair in 68. And then all of a sudden in 1972, he had gray hair. So what do you think? I find it interesting that all of a sudden after that show, he had gray hair just immediately in 1972 and 1970 as well. So tell me what you think. I think I thought it'd be interesting. Hope you guys find it interesting. And God bless you, Alan. And can't wait to be on your show. Talk to you later. All right. So that was Robbie. Now, uh, what we uh, what he's talking about? There's an episode of Hawaii Five O. Hawaii Five O. Uh, back in 1972, Andy was on there, and Joyce Van Patten uh, played his wife on that episode. And there is a clip on YouTube for it. There he is. And I did some screen captures so that we could uh, could really see. Now, Andy, in that episode, his hair is not as as dark brown as it was on the Andy Griffith Show, no doubt. So you can see it really well in the in the screenshots I have. It's more of a it's almost brown, a brown hair, and it's not as dark. So did he color his hair? Yeah, you know, I really I do not know because it was. It was about two years after the maybe our RFD because Andy went through several series there. So he did uh, he did the Andy Griffith Show. Then maybe our RFD he was on a few episodes, not very many, and then he left. Well, he came back with a series in. I'm not going to get these right, so let me uh, let me look. I can tell you, it was I believe in 1970 uh, when he came out with the Headmaster. I mean, I'm looking here to make sure I'm getting this close. Uh, And then uh, the next year he came out as, yes, in 1970 as Headmaster. It was a series. He played Andy Thompson on that. And there were only 13 episodes. It was in 1970. Then in 71, they brought back the new Andy Griffith show and where he played Andy Sawyer. Now, in that movie or that series, which didn't last but 10 episodes, uh, you know, Andy, in both of those, those were in 70 and 71. Now, there, his hair was not uh, gray in those episodes. But when you flip over to the Hawaii Five-O episodes, you can definitely tell that his hair uh, uh, seems to be gray as he's going through that. Now, as we move along forward, there was a movie called Winter Kill from 1974 where Andy played a uh, sheriff. I can't think of his name, but in that movie, he was a sheriff up in the Washington state area, I believe in that area of the country. And his hair was uh, more gray. It was definitely becoming gray salvage one. I don't know if you remember that series. His hair was pretty gray in that in uh, 1983 by 1983, he was doing murder in Coweta County with Johnny cash and in that series, his hair was completely, it was gray. Now, it was not yet Matlock gray, where it was white, but it was definitely gray. Uh, but when he came along in 86, which was three years later, Andy's hair was, was white. You know, it, had, it was basically completely gray by 86. So, a short answer there, I guess, would be, yeah, his hair was turning gray. It was ter- definitely turning gray over time. And uh, I believe uh, maybe maybe Andy's hair was uh, was really gray when he was on the Indy Griffith Show, and they colored it to keep it the same color as when he started in 1960, so that by 1960, you know, eight nine time frame, 
that his hair would still be the same color because he was still the same character. And, you know, that, that's not unusual. In Angel in My Pocket, the movie he did, his hair was still just like it was on the Indy Griffith show. As it was in 70 and 71, it could have been getting a little lighter. But, you know, by uh, by the time the Hawaii Five-0 in 1972 came out, which, you know, honestly, I can really see that his hair could have changed that quick. Because, well, look back at some of the videos of me on Two Chairs No Waiting, and you will see how quickly my hair keeps getting grayer. <laughs> so... Anyway, thanks for the call. That was a lot of fun uh, looking into and researching a little bit of that. Uh, okay, so now we got a voice, not a voicemail, a call that came in from uh, Jim. And he says, hey, Alan, my name is Jim, and I'm a regular listen to two chair, listener to Two Chairs No Waiting. I've listened in my car, uh, but for a month and a half, he was not able to listen. He says he, he loves the podcast, and he loves the Andy Grover Show. When he was a boy in the 60s, he'd watch the last seasons from CBS on Monday nights, I believe, he says, and Monday nights is when it came on. I loved it when Barney was bragging or when someone complain, uh, would compliment him, and he would bring his bottom lip up toward his nose, you know, and sniff, I guess. It brought to mind my father, who used to do the same thing when he was gloating. What a wonderful character. I've noticed that MeTV is now going exclusively to the black and white shows. Uh, going from season five back to season one with no color episodes. I bet they noticed a large drop off in viewership when the color episodes aired. We're going to pause right there. That's probably, that may very well be true. And I also know that some of the licensing involved with the Andy Griffith show uh, is you can only show certain episodes X number of times. I don't know what that number is, but there are some episodes you can show less often then you can show others. So it's possible they don't have the rights to show as many color, the many the color episodes as many times as they do the black and white, believe it or not. There is some uh, stuff like that. And, uh, and, and I know our local affiliate, and we've talked about this before on the podcast, I don't know when, maybe a long time ago, but they actually started showing the color episodes of Andy Griffith Show. They broadcast them in black and white because they found that the viewership was higher if the episode was in black and white. So they took, it was very strange to me when I'd be watching an Andy Griffith show episode and see Warren and it was a black and white episode. They actually broadcast the color ones in black and white to keep their viewership up. So maybe me TV is, uh, seeing the same thing. Uh, back to the, uh, the letter here. He says, I'm also a huge fan of old time radio. And so am I, I love it. Love old time radio. I listened to hundreds of shows over the years, and you would be surprised at the number of Andy Griffith Show stars who have appeared on the radio shows over the years, if it's possible to appear on radio. I don't know if you've ever heard of Chuck, uh, I should have looked up his name, Shaden, S-C-H-A-E-D-E-N. I'm sure I'm not saying his name right. He was a radio host from Chicago who had been airing old-time radio shows every Saturday afternoon from 1970 to 2009. When he retired from the show called Those Were the Days in 2009, each week he'd have a different theme. Yeah, and he sent me a link to the website. It's called Speaking of Radio. He said where you can listen to hundreds of interviews he did with radio stars, many of whom were visitors to Mayberry. You'll also find an article about that very thing from Nostalgia Digest from uh, 2005. Enjoy the article and let me know what you think. Thanks for all your hard work. And he sent me the link. And so thus our episode this week, it's called Speaking of Radio was the name of the website. And it's Chuck Shaden, S-C-H-A-D-E-N is his name, actually. And he he hosted this uh episode of this show all about this and there's a great article it's from nostalgia digest from the winter of 2005 and it's called mayberry folks in Ra uh, radio folks in mayberry so they did it the opposite i would have said mayberry folks in radio but he did it the opposite because he's a radio guy this is a great article i'm going to give you guys a link to it in our show notes and it is absolutely amazing because it lists all the different people over the years who are, were on the Andy Griffith show and appeared in old time radio. Now I've talked about these things in the past 
about uh, the great Gil- uh, Gildersleeve, where I've heard uh, characters. Uh, matter of fact, on Gildersleeve, the barber's name is Floyd. Now, it's not our Floyd from the Andy Griffith Show, but it's Floyd Munson is his name, Floyd. And his brother is named Otis, believe it or not. That was something I found years ago. And I believe I remember Tom Russ telling me that uh, they had a bird in one of those episodes named Dickie, you know, as Opie's bird's name. So there is a lot of connections back through old time radio to uh, the Andy Griffith show. And this article gives you all kinds of amazing stuff in that. Danny Thomas had appeared on old time radio. Uh, Let's see. uh, Sheldon Leonard was involved in old time radio. You know, both, you know, creators of the Andy Griffith show right there with them. And Howard McNear, of course, always dear to my heart. He portrayed Floyd Lawson, we know, but he was a regular on Gunsmoke. He was Doc. And Parley Bear, he played, uh, he was Chester on Gunsmoke. So I just wanted to play you just a little bit of a Gunsmoke episode so you guys would uh, see this because it is uh, it is absolutely amazing to me uh, to hear these guys doing these different roles. So this is an episode of Gunsmoke. Uh, I don't know. It's from uh, 1955. I'm just going to play you a little bit of it. And this one is called uh, Doc Quits. Now, okay, let me tell you who these people are. So you're about to hear William Conrad. William Conrad, who played Cannon on TV. You remember that? Anyway, he was William, William Conrad. Uh, he uh, He's Matt Dillon. So he's Marshall Dillon. And Chester is Parley Bear, Mayor Stoner from the Andy Griffith Show. And you'll hear Doc, and Doc is Howard McNear. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take Hi, this Hi, Doc. Out. Here we go. Chester. Oh, Doc. Uh, we, uh, we were on our way to Fort Lauderdale, and we saw Doc's buggy, so we thought we'd stop and say hello. How you do, ma'am? Chester. So there's Chester. Uh, your husband sick, Miss Crummer? No. No, Marshal. He died, Matt. All right. All right. So that was Doc. Sorry to hear that, ma'am. Doc done all he could. Just, just weren't no use. I might as well not have come. I couldn't do a thing for him. Now, Doc, don't say that. You've been up 24 hours trying to save him. It's not time that saves a patient, Mrs. Crumley. It's knowledge. Knowledge I don't have. You know what there is to know, Doc. Nobody knows more. Your husband's dead, Mrs. Crumley. I wanted to save him. You tried. Uh, what are you going to do now, ma'am? Uh, can we help you in any way? Thank you, Marshal. There's nothing. With Joe gone, I can't stay here. All right, so I'm going to... That's a, Anyway, that's an episode of Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke, all right. So now the uh, link I'm going to give you in our show notes, which would include uh, include this, uh, not that episode, but other episodes of, uh, well, we'll see it as we go through here. We'll have these great characters on there, like Floyd, which was, you know, Howard McNear playing Doc, uh, Parley Bear. They're Gunsmoke episodes. They're on there. Now, as I was reading through this uh, episode, uh, this uh, article, which I definitely encourage you to read if you're at all interested in in the Andy Griffith show and old time radio. Uh, there's information there about Don Knotts who appeared on, uh, on the radio as well. Uh, he did on one radio series uh, from 1949 to 1955. It was a half hour Western adventure show. Now this is one of the places Andy Griffith has talked about seeing Don Knotts. It was for children. It was called Bobby Benson and the Barbie bar riders. And it was heard on mutual networks. And Don Knotts played Wendy Wells. Don's talked about that at the time. He's a handyman on Bobby's ranch. And uh, so that's it was, uh, it was so fun to see some of these things, uh, hear some of them. Because you hear these guys and you recognize their voices. And it's like, oh, my goodness. Now, one guy that I had never realized, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to say his last name correctly. His name is Les Tremaine. Okay. Now, he played on the Andy Griffith Show. He was... Uh, well, let's see if I got a, I'll have a picture of this too, to be able to show you guys. But on the Andy Griffith show, he played the, uh, the crook, the jewel thief, 
when Andy and Barney went to the big city and Don Knotts or Barney's character uh, thought that Alan Melvin, the, t- the house detective, was the jewel thief. And the guy who played the jewel thief, he thought he was the detective. Remember that? So the guy who played the jewel thief, and I guess I had known this and I had never really put it back together. But his name, uh, as I said, let me go back and so I can read it, is Les Tremaine, T-R-E-M-A-Y-N-E, Tremaine. I believe I'm saying this correctly. Anyway, he was the he was the how he was the thief on that episode of the Andy Griffith Show. Okay, so what I'd never really mentioned here on the podcast, I used to watch a show growing up in the '70s because I love superheroes. I love them. So there was a, there was a Saturday morning cartoon series that used to come out called Shazam. I don't know if you ever saw it. And Shazam is uh, his name was Captain Marvel was the character, and Billy Batson was this regular boy who had been embowed super ha- superpowers. And anytime he said the word Shazam. Another Mayberry connection there. Of course, that's Gomer's favorite word. But when he said Shazam, he would get struck by lightning and turn into Captain Marvel. Well, on that TV series that came on on Saturday mornings, he had a guy that was teaching him and helping him learn and all this stuff. And he was called Mentor. And the guy who played Mentor uh, was Les Tremaine. Les Tremaine was actually the mentor in that episode. He was the, or in that series uh, where he was uh, Billy Batson's, you know, Captain Marvel's. Uh, it was his, uh, it was, it was, that was the guy. So anyway, the guy from the Andy Grover show, who was the jewel thief in the episode with Barney when they went to the city, was the same guy who played Captain Marvel's mentor in the old cartoon series it was a live action cartoon series on saturday mornings wasn't really a cartoon then but it was a live action series on saturday mornings called shazam it used to be paired with another show called isis so i don't know if any of you guys watch this kind of stuff or not but i i loved it you know billy batson he had tried to talk to the to the immortals because it was zeus and people like that who gave him his powers and he'd go oh mighty mortals fleet and strong and wise anyway i, I watched way too much tv when i was a kid anyway so heading back to the andy griffith show away from that i didn't ever realize that he had also been a uh, on uh, old time radio so he was on it olin soul was on there olin soul is uh is uh is mr masters the choir director from the uh, there on the andy griffith show he was on a lot of different series of uh, radio and Janet Waldo, uh, which uh, she just passed away recently, she was on the Andy Griffith Show as well, along with Sam Edwards, uh, both Andy Griffith Show cast members, and they appeared on so many things. Now, uh, now another one I already mentioned about uh, uh, the Great Gildersleeve's radio series. Now, the Great Gildersleeve uh, had Marjorie was his niece on that show, and Marjorie was played by Lorene Tuttle. Lorraine Tuttle, which is uh, Annabelle Silby from the Andy Griffith Show, you know, whose husband Tom went off and got hit by that tr- that taxi cab, <laughs> you remember? And she was on the shoplifter as an elderly woman who was stealing stuff that you know Barney and Andy or Barney called, and you know she old ladies ought never clank. That's her. So that's the same lady, Richard Crenna. Uh, he was on the he was on the he wasn't on the Andy Griffith Show. He was a director of the Andy Griffith Show. But he is also in uh, in uh, in several old time radio series, and Bob Sweeney also, and another one, uh, you know Clara, Clara Edwards, Hope Summers. She played uh, on on radio. She was in the world, the world's great novels. The show is dra- uh, dramatized uh, works of classic fiction like uh, Dickens and Melville and people like that. So Clara was on the radio. Will Wright was on there. You know, that Will Wright is Ben Weaver, the mean one, you know, from the Christmas episode. <laughs> he was on the he was on episodes of uh, of all kinds of different uh, radio shows. So, folks, if you're listening to old time radio, if you like to listen to that, I know that it comes on Sirius and XM radio. There's an old time radio station. All kinds of amazing, cool stuff uh, there. 
So Will Wright, just uh, go back to Will Ben Ben Weaver. He uh, he was on stuff like uh, the Charlotte Greenwood Show. Never heard of that one. The Man Called X. That sounds like something. Like, Mayor of the Town and My Little Margie. Now My Little Margie is a very popular one. You might have heard that. Howard Sprague's mother. She uh, play. She was play. Uh, she was Mabel Albertson. You might know that. Uh, and she appeared on the Phil Baker Show. Uh, yeah, so she was on there. Folks, there is so much. If you'd like to go and read this article, I am not even hitting on small amounts of it. Everett Sloan, he was on the old time radio. John Dinner here. Din here. Dinner. Dinner? Dinner. Uh, Colonel Harvey. <laughs> Whatever his, however you say his actually name. He was on old classic TV and radio shows. And I know I've talked about Norris Goff before. He was on uh, the Andy Griffith show. He was running the grocery store uh, that Opie was trying to get a job at in one of the color episodes. You remember that? He ran that. He also played Gomer Pyle's grandfather on the Gomer Pyle show, just so you know that. He was uh, he was on Lum and Abner. That's where he came from. Folks, there is so much to, to see here. So you need to really go and check out this uh, radio, uh, Mayberry Folks Own Radio it's from March 2005. Great article. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page I'm giving you a link to, you can listen to episodes of Gunsmoke, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, and uh, uh, The Adventures of Ellery Queen. That one would be really good. Uh, that one, let's see who's in it. it anyway, it has, ep- it has people from the Indy Griffith Show in it, and they will be telling you who they are. Suspense. Uh, it stars Jack Benny, so that would be a lot of fun. But it's got Sheldon Leonard is in that episode. Uh, anyway, there's all kinds of stuff here. You can go and listen to these. If you've got a few hours, you'd like to go and listen to different series. Uh, he he did four episodes, and they're all about uh, two or three hours each. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, where you can listen to different episodes from Dragnet, Inner Sanctum, Fibber McGee and Molly, Have Gun Will Travel, London and Abner. All of these are available to you to enjoy, and you can go and listen to them right there online, and you can download them if you're tricky as I am. (laughs) So anyway, they're a lot of fun to get to and just enjoy listening to these episodes uh, with uh, Howard McNear, Parley Bear, uh, you know, just so many different people from the Andy Griffith Show that were on Old Time Radio. Definitely want to invite you to do that. I will have a link in the show notes. And I'm putting a link in the chat room right now for the folks there so they can go and check this out if they'd like to. Uh, It is a it is a lot of fun, this story. So, folks, I hope I didn't bore you. I love old time radio. I love listening to it. It's something about listening to something when it's just right into your ear. I, I like to put in my headphones and listen and make that world come alive. So that's the reason I did a few episodes back. We did the Andy Griffith show episode that was like an old time radio show. Uh, because I love that kind of thing. It is so fun to me to use your imagination and just picture what these towns, the Great Gildersleeve is one of my favorites, and Lum and Abner is another, uh, where you can actually picture what everything looks like in this entire community that's built up around it. So it's a lot of fun. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I gave you a little bit of uh, things that might be fun for you to go and check out. If you've listened to all the Andy Griffith Show and seen them all, so maybe you want to go and find online, which you can. Most of these episodes are online for free, and you can listen to Mayberry folks on radio or radio folks in Mayberry. <laughs> Depends on your point of view. So, folks, again, I want to thank you for being here. I'd love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415, or you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. However you'd like to get in touch with me, I would love to hear from you. I want to thank those who called and wrote in for this episode. And until next time, we'll see you right here in Mayberry. Have a great week.